Welcome to Project Dad Life. My name is Mike. This week's project turned out awesome. Check it out. Hit the thumbs up button, make sure you subscribe, and let me show you how this project actually started. I was wrong, it was not. This deck has been a lot of work. It's looking good. Attached to our beams from our pergola that we already built. Ready? Yeah. All right, guys, so here's our current patio, pretty standard for new construction. We're gonna build a giant elevated porch on top of this. This is gonna help give us some elevation and dimension to the back of the house, then get rid of a lot of this mud so it's a lot cleaner when you're hanging out and give us a ton more space. So there's a ton of different ways you can do this. Hang out with me this week and I'll show you how I'm gonna tackle this huge project. Let's go. So far this is working out perfect. We had enough space or drop from our threshold on our door to do a vertical two by four with a five quarter deck board on top. So this is gonna be our starting point and that is our fixed position and we're gonna span out from there and make sure everything else is level from this point. So right here is our slab we're going over top of. This is gonna act as our foundation. So once we get all this level and free floating on top of the slab, we'll go back and we'll add proper shims of the right height to make sure everything is shimmed out good. And these are just pressure treated two by fours that are acting as our floor joist. Our span from door to end of the deck is about 20 feet. So we're gonna sister a two by four with a two by six. And the ends of the two by sixes will be attached to our two by six ledger board that was attached to our beams from our pergola that we already built. That was stage one. So the only additional foundations we're gonna have to make is something to cover this 12 foot span. Because we're running two by six on 16 inch centers, I think maybe just even like a paver or a stepping stone under here, get everything shimmed out, take up the sag a little bit and we will be perfect. <laughs> So I have the perimeter of the deck complete. Everything is level, everything's strung up and supported where it needs to be. I built several decks and this is kind of the way I like to do it. I do my band, I elevate everything, get it level, and then I come back in in the middle and support. Pull strings if I need to, you know, use some big levels, make sure everything is good, there's no sags. And one thing um, that you want to remember is you want to look at your board and make sure that your floor joists, you want to put the crown facing up. So every board is going to have a crown, so you just want to make sure that you don't put the crown facing down. Face them all up, and then when the deck wears in with the weight, it'll kind of settle hopefully perfect. So with the outer band done and supported, now I'm just going to focus on the middle. It's looking good.
Nothing for you though, right? We did one um, block foundation right here through the center. We split the difference on the two by six, like I was saying, and we just went through, pulled the string, tension all those up and put some uh, supports on there. Now I got the boys help me out. We're gonna fill in the side of the house where it's kind of getting closed off with gravel, um, but I am gonna trim that part up against the house. That way I have access to it if I ever need to go around and spray for like termites or anything like that. So they're doing that. We have one more row of bracing or blocking to do. As you can see right back here, we did a little bit already. So I'm gonna do um, two runs of blocking or bracing in between our floating supports on the two by six. Other than that, the frame is about finished and then hopefully get this done this afternoon. And then tomorrow we'll go pick up our decking and top it. We are just about ready to start putting all the deck board on. There's a few things I wanna show you guys that I kinda of did differently, not differently, but a couple of the hurdles, I guess, you should say that I had to do with this deck covering the patio. This is some great stuff, pest block and installation. So what I did, if you reach under your siding, there was a couple spots where it felt like there was some gaps or it kinda of needed to be sealed up. So before I cover this up with a deck, I went through, I just bent the top of this nozzle to where it kind of had a hook on it and it hooked perfectly under the siding. And then I insulated and sprayed the line all the way down. That way I kind of get some peace of mind, don't have to worry about it. So that's one of the things we did there. Um, the last thing we have to do is go through and luckily because I cut an angle off the two by sixes where they met the patio, I have these nice pressure treated shims left. So I'm gonna go through and shim the middle span on these two by fours and we should be good to go on that because this is obviously covered it never even gets wet with the weather just went and got some uh, cinder blocks right here and as you can see i also had some leftover 16 by 16 pavers and i wanted to overthink that so bad and do something a lot more you know crazy and expensive than this but this is a budget way to do it and i think it's going to work so that's what I did there. And now we only have about a four foot span is the longest on these two by sixes. So I think it's gonna work out perfect. So I'm gonna get everything cleaned up and then we're gonna start throwing this decking on.
Ready? Yeah. Yeah. It's like we keep adding these doors and it's like nothing's happening. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You get that feeling too? Yep. It is the final build day. As you can see, I have four more rows of deck board to go. Luckily enough, I got the perfect amount of material, so I have eight boards left. So we're gonna get this decking on over here, and then I'll just have to trim out these posts that go through the deck. I'll probably just use some like one by two pressure treated for that, but everything's coming together pretty good. It was definitely a little bit bigger project than I was thinking. I definitely thought the deck would be easier than the pergola. I was wrong, it was not this deck has been a lot of work. And it kind of breaks my heart that I still have to stain this thing. <laughs> I haven't stained anything in a long time. So if you guys have any good stain recommendations, leave a comment below. I will be spraying this. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait probably about two months because the pressure treat is so wet nowadays. That is the to-do list for today. So not much, hopefully about an hour or two, we will be done with this project and we will do the final reveal. Let's get started. One of the last boards I'm gonna to have to cut to go around these uh, center posts right here. Two things you wanna make sure. You wanna make sure your seam is lined up at the end. You can see down here, that's where I'm gonna nail my nail joint. So I wanna make sure that is in position and your board is centered on the porch. And then you wanna make sure your coping is good. So you wanna make sure the crown on the board is angled up, that way the rain runs off. Once you get those two things, I'm just gonna use a straight edge and go on my board right here. I'm gonna make a pencil mark all the way down and this is capturing the width of this post now i'm going to try and keep this as tight as i can even though i am trimming it out it'll just fit a lot better so i'm going to do this get my width and then once the width is done and i know the location i'm going to pull the decking board back and i'm going to use my speed square again and i'm just going to measure the depth from the decking board to the post and it looks like we are right at two and seven eighths so now I know I need to leave two and seven eighths right here. So I'm gonna put this square back on the deck board and I'm gonna mark just below two and seven eighths. That way we don't have too much of a gap. Two and seven eighths, flip the square up top, straight edge from dot to dot. Now to make the cut, I'm gonna use a circle saw. Now one thing I recommend doing is marking the corner that you wanna cut off because as you get working, you will end up cutting the wrong piece off. So always scribble that out. And now what we're gonna do is take a circle saw. I'm gonna do a plunge cut right on this line right here, get close to this edge without going over, and then I'll do a straight cut down these. We'll finish it off with the Sawzall. Moment of truth. And that's just one simple way to do it with basic tools so you don't have any overcuts. All right, stay focused back at it. It looks like one and a half more sticks and we will be covered. The very last board is on. The last thing I have to do is run a chalk line down this edge right here. This was the overhang. I typically do this after I get done building it. That way you can kind of set your overhang where you want it and then you just zip all the ends off and it lines up perfect.
As always, guys, thank you for watching. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. Total cost on this project was right around $1,550. So $1,500 bucks to do this total lower deck. For a complete cost breakdown with the lumber used and a more detailed list, check the description below. And we will see you next week for another project. Thank you, guys.